Hello, everybody. This is Terrence from Suffocation, and you're listening to Interview Under Fire. All right. How's it going out there, everyone? Welcome back to a brand new episode of Interview Under Fire. This is your host, Sonny, here back once again. And today I am here with a seasoned veteran guitarist in Terrence Hobbs. Quite the honor, man. You know, thank you so much for joining oh, our IUF series today. Now, Terrence, you know, this is an exciting time of the year for you and the rest of the guys over at yeah. the Mighty Suffocation with the release of your latest live album, Live yeah. in North America, which just I dropped here her. on November 12th uh, on Nuclear Blast. Uh, first things first, man. I want to commend you guys on all of the, you know, just getting getting this far into your storied career with the band over 30 right. years of existence and all no, the well-deserved not. recognition you guys have been getting. I mean, could we expect anything less? Let's be real here. I know we talked about it before the interview started, but <laughs> plenty of things to unravel about, you know, this unique album and who you guys are all about. Now that we're kind of collectively seeing the light at the end of this long tunnel we've been in for the last year and a half, two years. I mean, oh, two things, man. Yeah. Uh, how are you and how's life out there in Long Island, New York? <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, I'll put it to you like this. Everything is cool. I mean, we're still here. Band is still alive. Um, you know, obviously, we've had a share of trials and tribulations over the whole COVID episode. Um, and obviously, it's not over because things are constantly still in flux. And of stuff. course. But we're OK. I mean, we had some time to get our um, rehearsal rooms and things down here and some recording gear together, start writing on another new record. So next year sometime you will see a new record from Suffocation, uh, providing that we're not touring our brains out like we were pre-COVID. Because, I mean, you know, you know, our object is to always put out a record and try to get to every nook and cranny of the planet and play in front of everybody as we can. And uh, it's been kind of tough over the last 20 months. So now we've just returned to uh, going back to the stage. And uh, we had a we had a show down in Atlanta. We played um, we played a metal fest down there, which was really cool. Played with Violence, some other bands like Malignancy, Nuclear Assault, like those bands played down there. We just did a show here at a small venue in Long Island, and it was sold out. Had a great time seeing all of our friends, you know, we hadn't been able to see over the last twenty months. And uh, tomorrow we go down to Maryland to play a makeup show, which, you know, for our buddy Zach down there. We're playing with Abominog, Internal Bleeding, Malignancy, uh, Forbidden right Technology, on. and I believe one more other band. So it should be really cool. You know, um, we'll have the opportunity to see our friends again and be able to go back out on the road. Um, also, in the same light, you know, COVID really kind of fucked up things, but it, it allowed us to really kind of group our shit back together and rethink some things. So it wasn't so bad being being off, but really none of us wanted to, you know. Yeah, yeah you know. Uh, making the best of a situation that I feel like that's like a commonality we had to really think about for the last year and a, year, year and a half. I mean, I'm working from home now. I didn't realize I've been yeah. working from home for the last year and a half. And then my job was like, Hey, we can actually do this from home. Look at this. Right, and, right, we've, right. All, we've all adapted to that. See, for me, for me, it's like, yeah, being in a band, you can do certain things at home. You can do the live video feeds and the, the band playing and everything. But I mean, it's just not as organic to us. And so we just really wanted to take our time to just get our rehearsal spot together, make sure we had our gear straight, like write more as much as we possibly could, um, work on some older songs to bring into the set, amongst other things. So, I mean, we had our hands full during the whole pandemic and there was a lot of, like, let's say, hurdles we had to get across because our drummer is Canadian and mm -hmm. let alone that they're letting everybody across the border down south, coming in from Canada where they had a lot of restrictions as well, was making it kind of hard to get him here for the work visa and to be able to play the shows. So we had to overcome that. And uh, finally it happened. So we're good to go. And we're able to be out and playing and, you know, we don't have to really worry about uh, the next six to eight months of his work visa and being yeah. here for some recording and all that stuff. Or the next or the next six to eight months of lockdown. Whenever, yeah, exactly. whenever that, it's like a different mindset if you think about and, it. Yeah, they, they change it every week. So now it's like we can't really... I mean, let alone the music industry was fucked to begin with. You know, it's not an easy <laughs> industry. And, you know, everybody is like, oh, my God, you know, we got to take $5,000 worth of gear in a $500 car yeah. to a $5 show. Well, that shit is true. But when it came down to COVID, it was like, dude, we can't even get into a car and go and play a show. So, you know, it, it was a little bit tough for us to deal with that kind of shit. 
but I'm glad we were able to get back out now. Hopefully, um, they won't be changing the rules and making everybody fucking start crazy and bipolar, and we'll be able to get back on with it. And you know, the musicianship, the musicians, the the merch, the merch industry, and all the rest of that stuff will finally pick back up again and do the right thing. You know. Yeah, yeah. and speaking of picking back up again, I, I got to ask about this because, uh, you know suffocation and for people who don't know you guys have been around three, you know, three decades of headbanging i mean just brutal death metal and that feels as as it. like yeah you know you know it can, it can date back to back like the early 90s late 80s but you know you've been at this for a while terrence everything that you're telling me whether it's with suffocation or castrophate or criminal element or even deprecated you know i, I want to talk about that touring life uh touring life that you guys you have talked about because you played at uh, festivals like Vakken and you know Hellfest, Brule Assault, seventy thousand tons, just to name a, name a few over the years. But what is it about you know performing live that you love the most, or maybe even miss the most? Do you have a newfound appreciation about it now? Uh, yeah, I mean to be honest with you, it was really kind of heartbreaking to have to like because we were on tour when COVID hit, actually hit, and yeah. Trump was like we're closing down the border and this and that and the other thing. I was like, fuck, man. Like we've never really had to cancel a show. And if we did have to cancel it, it was like well in advance before a show was ever, you know, was ever really finalized or somebody who had died in the family or, you know, something real, real tragic, you know? Yeah. We've never had to really cancel, especially like when we're on the road and we have our fans waiting for us, our friends that we've, you know, grown up with throughout the years that have traveled and moved on in the world, you know, we're still able to keep contact with them and be able to see them. And I think that has a lot to do with us being on the road. It, it's like, it's a dual lifestyle, you know what I mean? And it's something that like, you could go out on the road and you'd be out there for two months, you know? And you'll just be like, man, I gotta go back home. I have to go back home and just take care of life. Like, you know, put myself back together, take care of the bills, make sure everything's square with your families, and everything else. And then, you know, you'll be home for that month or whatever, and then you're like, I got to get back out on the road, you know, I got I to gotta go and do what we're good at. So, I mean, it, it's, it's almost like if you're working in a job that you hate, you hate being there, but it, this is like a hobby that's turned into a career that is something I love. So I think all the guys in my band really love being able to go out and play live, see our friends, see our fans, see people smiling, see them bumping into each other, playing gigs with your other friends, bands, like, you know, you go out there and you run into goat whore, you run into pestilence or you run into like, you know, sinister or something like cannibal corpse, like all the people that like, you know, and to be able to share a stage with them and just reminisce about growing up and having a couple of drinks, to bar, like all that stuff, like really is in here. And it's great when you can turn around and have that kind of lifestyle. And after 30 years, it's kind of like crack, you know, you know, you're never going to stop. <laughs> it's, it. it's part of your DNA, right? Yeah, and, yeah, and, and little, little, little things like you're little things like. Rest, yeah, yeah you're for the rest of your life. So, I mean, if there is a drug in the world that's the most addictive, I would think it would be that and having this kind of lifestyle and being a part of it for so long. It's just like a piece of me, you know. So, I mean, I do. I honestly I missed it more than anything in the world you know, um, during COVID because we had off 20 months. Of course. And that's a long time. Yeah, we were able to get together and practice and write stuff, but it's it's definitely a lot different than being able to be out on that stage and blow off all your aggressions and see it and hang out with your fans and get to see a different part of the world or, you know, stuff like that. It's just it's just something I would never want to give up or, or let, let slip away from. I feel like the term grateful has been emphasized a lot, you know, and, you know, yeah, that's I'm definitely very, something. I'm very grateful for it and for the fans. You know? Yeah. And, and I'm very grateful for, you know, just you guys doing what you're doing, going to shows again. And you're talking about, you know, the live experience. This Let's talk about this new live album, Live in North America, which yeah, uh, dropped this past week on Nuclear Blast Records on November 12th. Now, uh, again, for people who don't know, this is a live album that was uh, recorded during your death chopping North American uh, tour Which, from 2018. Uh, Frank, yeah, that was Frank Mullen's last tour with us. Right. I mean, you know, Frank has always been, uh, you know, Frank's always a part of the band. He's always been a great friend. He still is. We still always, you know, talk to each other, run into each other, you, you know, just as friends, go have some drinks at each other's houses, stuff like that. And just because, I mean, we grew up together. Um, but Frank, you know, I think over the course of time, just 
you know, like real life kind of took over and that's where he is and where he's at, where he wanted to focus his attentions. And we can't knock him for that because it is a tough lifestyle being out on the road a lot, having the right music produce it. It's really tedious. You know, it takes a lot of uh, a lot of effort on his voice and on his throat and on his head, his blood pressure, everything like that. So, I mean, for me, it was kind of sad to know that that was the last tour he was going to do. So before we ever even went out on the tour, it was like, hey, Frank, you know, what songs are you the most comfortable playing? Hmm. Which is the reason that those are the songs that are on the Live in North America record. And, uh, you know, we wanted to really make it something that was special and something that really reflected, you know, the band from the old to the new, even though, Frank, this is his last thing, you know, it's older songs that we're playing, uh, some, you know, new guys in the band. Well, they're not that new anymore after five or six years, but... Uh, you know, we just wanted to bring a really good representation of what the band was like, what the crowd was like for us. Um, you know, a good production where we played the best. So we went through like maybe 15 or 20 different live shows that we had recorded all the tracks from, from their live rigs, you know, when we were on the stage. Had to sit there, listen to all of that, and then find the one that really best suited us for all of you guys. And that's what you got is live in North America. So, uh, you know, Massachusetts, thank you for being so awesome to us and uh, bringing, for, bringing forth Frank's last recording. It wouldn't be the same without you guys, and we really appreciate it. I mean, talk about a send-off of send-offs, Terrence. Yeah. I, I mean, so well, you, I'm going so, to miss him not being yeah, uh, acting a fool, but, you know. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to miss Frank, too. I mean, and Frank, just, you know, he's considered as one of the most emblematic death metal vocalists as well as one, one of the first to very use that deep growl, you know, it was very, very influential. So, so I'm guessing there was that sense of closure for you, Terrence and the rest of the guys knowing that, Hey, this is going to be the final yeah. dance, I suppose, you know, that Michael Jordan has that one show of it called the final dance, but you know, last dance, you know, you kind of knew that that was it for Frank, you know, yeah. I yeah. guess that, did that make it easier knowing that it wasn't like, Oh, all of a sudden Frank uh -huh. is, making this yeah, decision in, 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 in a certain way because it, it took a while before it all like actually came to fruition like he kept saying he was going to do it but then there was like it was like frank you know if we can do a tour over here for a couple of shows and maybe you could say goodbye to that area and then do a few shows over here and say goodbye to that area and so on and so forth then at mm. least it's not like you know we did just one show and that was it everybody would have to just try to manage to get there if they wanted to see it so he was really he was really um you know, he was really on board with being able to try to do that with everybody and yeah. especially with the band. And I like really we tried, I, especially me, I tried really hard to be like, no, 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 you're not quitting. What what kind of shit is that? You know? You've been with me doing this shit for forever. Now you're going to, you know. Yeah. And I mean, it, it, I guess it's a little bit different because, you know, I rely on my hands and, you know, stuff like that, where he's relying on his throat and his lungs and, you know, things inside your inside your body. You know, so none of us will ever know what that's like and what he has to go through. So, you know, for him, I think it was a wise decision because maybe it's affecting some some parts of his health. Maybe he feels his voice isn't the same and or, or something to that effect. Or maybe he just didn't really give a crap and he's just like, <laughs> I'm happy now. Just leave me alone. I don't need to go anywhere. You know, it's probably a combination of both. He's done his time, I guess. <laughs> yeah, he's done the time. Like, he already did his bid. So now he's out. You know, he wants to do his thing. I mean, uh, us being musicians, you know, we just never want to stop playing. I don't think I'll ever stop playing until either my arthritis kicks in so bad that I can't pick up a guitar. No, or, no, you're going to keep playing. Uh, man. Yeah, I just can't. Yeah, exactly. So for me, that's where I'm at. And I think the other guys in the band feel the same way. So it, had a, it was a hard felt decision, you know, but yeah, I think it's the right decision. And, and, sh and shout out to Frank for everything he's done throughout his career. You know, you know here's, here's the thing. You know, you're telling me all this, you know, uh, with Suffocation, Terrence, you guys already have albums which have gone to be certified as staple records among millions of fans and musicians today. I mean, especially within the death metal realm, you know, song, you know, albums I like never would have thought, you know, Effigy of the Forgotten, you know, Pierce from Within, just name a few. And this new live album, it's just another impressive addition to your catalog. You know, despite the lineup changes over the years, and this is coming from my perspective, you guys have really honed in to that sound and identity and I've stayed true to that over the years. I don't care who you are. I mean, yeah, yeah. eight records is not an easy thing to do. Oh. Yet here you are, but knowing and being a part of that success, that suffocation has been through, you can tie it with a break as well, but walk me through this, Terrence, you know, 
Uh, does writing get easier or does the pressure of so many great records make it harder? Well, for me, it makes it harder because, you know, I always want to make sure that there's like, you know, some new blood or new things coming from all the members of the band because we're a band because everybody can contribute, you know. Hmm. And being that I've been there from the beginning all the way up until now, you know, I never want to continuously write the same thing over and over and over again. And with all the riffs that I've written and all the stuff that we've accomplished and, you know, I feel like it just gets a little bit more, it gets harder because I want to keep the originality and keep all that stuff, but I still want to make it new. So it's interesting to play and it's, in, you know, interesting to bring forth to other people. I want to learn other people's styles and bring that forth to keep things fresh. So it, it makes it a little bit more difficult for me. Mm. I mean, of course I could sit there and I could bang out riffs all day long and that's just, you know, Terrence's writing style. I would call, I would call it. But do I like Terrence's writing style after playing, you know, this my whole entire life? No. So, you know, I always have to sit there and, and rack my brain to come up with something that I think is going to be good to bring out to everybody. And it's the same way for any of the other guys, because, so you know, with the exception of like maybe Derek, who's been with me for like the last 18 years now, mm -hmm. uh, the other guys that have been there for, you know, five or six years will just hear me fucking off, you know, and I'm just riffing. And they're like, that's sick. And I'm like, I fucking hate it. I am <laughs> you, guys. you guys might as well just hang up that bullshit. It ain't happening, you know? And, uh, you know. I'm just saying, you have a new, if you have new music coming up, just be ready oh, for that. It's, just it's, be ready it's super for that. brutal. It's super brutal. Yeah, we're about halfway there with a the new record. So hopefully by the middle of next year, we'll have it done. Oh, yeah. And we'll have it squared away with all the concepts, the album covers and all that. But right now, we're really just trying to focus on the music. And getting back into the swing of things of touring because we had off so long. But yeah, the new stuff is, it's, you know, it's right there. Like, it, you're not really going to, you know, maybe you'll change your opinion just because of the vocals. But for me, I really like the vocal area that Ricky Myers is in. And he's he's really working out well. So I think you guys will be, be pleasantly satisfied and surprised by it. But the music itself is just right there with anything from the past that we've been doing. Like we use we use the same formulas, the same styles, and those type of things to to bring to bring our new music to life. So hopefully you guys will enjoy it. But it's gonna be a minute before you get it. But hopefully you like. It. Oh, I know I like it. Well, oh, I well, 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 <laughs> you set this up for me perfectly because uh, turning the page, right? Big shoes to fill. Frank's gone. Now okay. here we are with Ricky Myers. Let's talk about Ricky Myers for a second because he took over as soon as Frank. Uh, left the band and Ricky, he's known for his work with uh, Cinerary, Discord, yeah, uh, Sarcoletics, Serpentis Whisper. Yeah. I mean, that list goes on forever. But you know, what new element does Ricky bring, or perhaps even brought back into suffocation yeah. that the lineup may not have had before? You oh, think there's well, a you think there's a there sense is. of pressure for him at the same time? I, I, well, yeah, absolutely. And I mean, the good thing about it is, I mean, if you're just looking at it from being in a band perspective, being a band with the man. Um, you know, Ricky, he's, he's killer because he's he's been a part of the music scene for a long time. You know, with Disgorge, that was his band. I mean, you know, we've been out on tour with them before. Obviously, back and forth, we've always been friends with them. And uh, I mean, he's he's a, he's a person that his heart and soul is in, in it, you know. Mm -hmm. So whether or not he's playing drums or doing vocals or just throwing ideas around that he hears in his head, he's actually doing that. And that is something that like, we kind of really need and feed off of to bring that new, that new opening out to everybody. And he's working his ass off. So I got to give him credit. I couldn't be happier with that. I mean, he's constantly writing lyrics. He's constantly rearranging things and trying to articulate certain words, emulate certain things that Frank would do that, you know, is not necessarily him, you know? And I want to bring more of what he is into the band because I think it's a little bit better. Like, because Frank was working his way out, you know, he wasn't putting in all that same amount of energy and that same amount of um, ass. He wasn't just dropping the same amount of ass into it the way that he was when he was young and he was really anxious to do it. Hmm. And now, um, you know, Ricky has kind of taken that on in himself. And I mean, the man practices every day. He wants to practice every day. He, you know, he's really effluent on drums. So with that being said, he's got really good timing, you know, in the way that he structures things. He's, he's 
it's a it's a good thing for us. And yeah. I mean, it sucks because it's big shoes to fill because everybody's used to Frank Mullen. But in the same light, it's like really a breath of fresh air for us because it takes a lot of pressure off of each of us having to do somebody else's job unless it's something that we feel like if I wanted to write lyrics, I'd be like, here, here's these lyrics I wrote, you know, but for me, really, I would just want to focus on riffing. Yeah. For Ricky, I, I, for Ricky he's like, oh, maybe you try this on the drums because he's a drummer. Oh, I'm going to pace it like this because his timing is good. Oh, I'm going to do this because it sounds like something that Frank would do. You know, I would, I would syllabalize it like that. And that's where he is. So he's putting all that into his mind. So it's got to be a little tough for him to fill Frank's shoes and especially in those areas, but he's doing a really fucking kick-ass job of it. So yeah, I, 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 yeah, it's it's so great to hear that. And I feel like this would show a whole different side of suffocation that we may not have expected that we'll actually end up really loving. And right. uh, looks like looks like you found the right we're guy. Go, we're going die hard, bro. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's the only way to do it. Um, man, uh, Terrence. So we are, we got five minutes left. So I talked about that surprise at the end, right? So. We we got we're gonna go ahead and go ahead and do that before I let you go to your next interview. So here's what we're gonna do. You, you okay? You got your coffee ready? I got mine ready too. So this is gonna be a lot of fun. All right. It's my oh, high life superfood. High life. I, oh, that's just, okay. Yes. I don't I don't have that. I, I got the coffee. So I'm <laughs> actually just get some superfood after this. Actually, now you got me <laughs> thinking right. about lunch. Um, keep you going. <laughs> <laughs> all right, here we go. So what I'm gonna do here, uh-huh. um, I'm gonna put do something called the lightning round. <laughs> So we're gonna do i'm gonna go down a list terrence and you just have to think quick on your feet you have to pick one or the other all right i'm gonna ask you a question we're just okay. gonna go down this list all right some of them are plain simple some of them are just downright stupid but that's the fun part about it okay you ready Damn. okay you got it all right get, you got the superfood all right what's the capital of new york albany <laughs> just kidding i know you're from new york all right red or blue uh red vegan or meat meat coffee or tea tea cats or dogs Dogs. Star Wars or Harry Potter? Star Wars. Who's your favorite character? What, in Star Wars? Yeah. Oh, man, come on. It's like Luke. <laughs> that's a, you know, that's it's a, just... Hey, you, got, you, gotta go, you can't go yeah, over. Yeah, you know, I gotta somebody, somebody said, no, 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 wait. It's Anakin. I was like, oh, that's a good answer. Okay. Yeah, well, it could be Anakin. We, could, like go, we could go down that rabbit hole forever. All right. Mexican food or Italian food? Mexican. All right. I'm here in Texas. This is a big debate. Is it pecan pie or pecan pie? Well, here we say pecan. Oh, I didn't know that. So over, I say pecan, but over here, it's just split down the middle. Like there's right. people would argue with each other. No, I'll it's pecan. pecan or pecan. Yeah, yeah. All right. It's, now it's a like car kettle up in Boston. We call it car here in New York. They call oh. it cat. <laughs> Getting a I cat, had no idea. Kettle, you know? It's All right. Weird. Now, now you said you're from Long Island. I got to ask this question. Sure. Giants or Jets? Oh, man, that's a tough one. I mean, I'm going to go with the Giants because that's my brother-in-law's favorite. Not so big... so you don't know this, but I'm I'm a diehard New York Giants fan. I was just in Kansas City when we played them on Monday night a couple yeah. weeks ago. So I go every year. Obviously, I'm in Dallas. And when the Giants come to Dallas, uh, I always go to those right. games. Well, Frank Mullen's favorite team is the Dallas Cowboys. So oh. uh, at least you guys at least you guys got that on us. <laughs> hey, a shout you out have to your cheerleaders, bro. Hey, we got hey, we got the two Super Bowls for the last 10 years. You can't really say that for the for the Dallas hey, Cowboys. You guys so. killed the game. You guys killed the game. I can't complain. All right. Country or K-pop? God, K-pop. I'll take K-pop any day of the week over. Here. Halloween or Christmas? Halloween. LA or Chicago? LA. Are tomatoes a fruit or a vegetable? Vegetable. Effigy of the Forgotten or Pierced from Within? Pierced from Within. If Hannibal Lecter. Offer to buy you a beer, would you accept? No. <laughs> Fuck that, I'm would I'm you out. would you rather do you say it? these get stupid? Uh, would you rather be able to speak every language in the world or be able to talk to animals? I'd rather speak every language in the world. Okay. That's I would too, actually. Some people would say, Yeah, I can still talk to my cats, so I guess I can speak every language in the yeah, world. But, so. uh, you know, I can't I can't go to fucking Spain and speak Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a point there at least i'd be able to get from point a to point b you know you, you got a point there all right last one this is a good one this throws everybody off there's a time machine in front of you terrence mm-hmm. it's the, it says the destination is woodstock 99 do you take the trip knowing what transpires there um no 
Mm. Not going. And reason being is because a lot of my friends went to Woodstock. And a lot of my friends were covered in mud and piss and shit and rainstorms and all that crazy shit. I'm just not about all that, man. <laughs> you know, yeah, I'd rather yeah. stay home and watch it on the TV at that point. And but, the, yeah, go ahead. But, I mean, I'll take a good festival I can play out any day of the week. You know? Oh, right on. Yeah, I, I, that's at HBO. If I was playing yeah. Woodstock, that would be different. <laughs> that's a different story. And then, and, and then that'd be, man, hell, suffocation of Woodstock. Sign me up. Yeah, I mean, come that's, on. And artists would say, yeah, can I go there as like a VIP? I don't want to deal with the crowd. I'm like, oh, that's a good right, question, too. Right. You know, I mean, I get it. It's in New York, but it's not close to where I am. So I can't just go home and take a shower, you know? We'll, we'll revisit that question when you guys release that new album. Uh, Terrence, this has been such an honor, man. Uh, I'll, let you, I'll, let you, I'll let you go here, man. Uh, do you have any last words, any shout outs, anything like a plug in before? Well, you if you haven't gotten it, grab Live in North America out on Nuclear Blast. We're going to be playing down in Maryland tomorrow. Hopefully, you guys will come to Frederick's Cafe 611. We'll see you out on the road. Keep supporting your underground metal music and zines. And stay heavy, my friends. Stay hey, heavy. Hey, Terrence, I hope you. I hope to see you here in Dallas soon. You know, hopefully we'll do this I, in person. I, I hope too. so. I would love to go and play at Trees or at Gas Monkey or wherever I can get out there because it's always a good time in Dallas. And it's not Gas Monkey anymore. It's it's amplified. They changed the venue. The Gas Monkey is gone. Uh, see, <laughs> look gone. what I learned. After 20 <laughs> months, they changed the game. <laughs> but hey, we'll stay in touch on the socials, man. Uh, have a Absolutely. great rest of the tour, man. Everyone yeah. who's listening, this is Terrence Hobbs from Suffocation. Pick up live from North America, live in North America right now on Nuclear Best Records. Keep an eye out for new music. Terrence, this has been great, man. Stay safe out there. I'll talk to you yes, soon, buddy. Man. You got it, my man. I'll talk to you soon. Hey guys, thanks for listening to Interview Under Fire podcast. If you guys liked what you heard, please subscribe and share our channel. And please leave a five-star review as that helps us tremendously. If you'd like to check out more, visit www.interviewunderfire.com or our social media channels on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And finally, we want to thank you all for the support you've been giving us. Keep it burning.